the Sports Renegades podcast on SportstownChicago.com. Welcome back to the Sports Renegades on this lovely Thursday night where it is six degrees outside and I actually... It probably feels like negative 20. <laughs> yeah, you know, on the before I left today, I actually heard on the radio or on the TV that it was so cold that it's difficult to breathe outside. Yeah, I, I I could see that happening. I didn't try to breathe outside. I just tried to get in as fast as possible. But yeah, <laughs> it's um, it's it's really bad out there. I think we broke some sort of records for I think a record low and, and then a record uh, high because I think it was only a high of like four mm. degrees or something. Yeah, they said there was in the city. Yeah, even though it was only like seven degrees out, they said like something with the wind chill made it like super difficult to breathe and it hadn't been like that even on days that were colder last year mm-hmm. yeah it's uh it's it's really sucky although i heard saturday it's supposed to be like 34 degrees <laughs> so it's, it's gonna be a major warm-up and that and that's gonna be cold again boy that's gonna feel like 100 and I think, degrees yeah and i think there's supposed to be snow though I, i'd rather take the extreme cold than the warmer temperatures with the snow yeah, and when it's like when if it's thirty four, then it's going to be the packed snow. So it'll be even yeah, more it's gonna a be pain to shovel. Wet snow. Ugh, it's it's something I don't want. Yeah, I mean, I I like I personally like the cold. I like when it's like negative degrees out. It's better than, than snow. I, yeah, I, I'm with you on that. But I prefer if it's like sixty and sunny year round. <laughs> I I like that type of weather. Sixty, yeah, sixty five, something. Yeah, like that. as long as it's not like above seventy, then it's like starts getting to sweating weather and actually yeah uh my friend he uh or a snowplow was driving by his house and it plowed over his mailbox oh i i think that happened to a neighbor of ours a while ago and yeah. the best part is they have it on there because they had like a security camera because they get, they got their house tp like multiple days in a row so they got like security cameras on the outside and they actually had the footage of the snowplow plowing <laughs> down the mailbox <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right, so let's uh, continue our discussion with the Bulls here. Um, we saw uh, news was starting to break that the Bulls and a couple other teams, including the Cavaliers and the Clippers, are are interested in getting Pendrick, in getting Kendrick Perkins once uh, he completes his buyout with Utah. So the Bulls are a serious contender for him, apparently. Yeah, the only problem I have is where does he fit into the rotation? And when will he, and if he does, when will he fit in? Because whenever you you get, I mean, remember Jimmer Fredette, they thought that he was going to be like the savior for the season to help him out with shooting, and then Mm -hmm. he never played. Yeah, he he only played when the Bulls were either down by 20 or up by 20 with like a minute left. Mm -hmm. Then he'd come in and shoot a couple threes. And he'd make them. That was the thing. He was making all of his shots. Yeah, he's a great shooter. I I, I don't know how good he'll be when, you know, I don't know how good he is when he's guarded, but he's done a pretty good job. I think he's with the Pelicans now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only problem was he was like six foot two, so it's not, if he was taller, maybe then Thibodeau would have played him. I mean, it's just kind of crazy, this point guard factory that the Bulls produce. Yeah, I know. It's CJ uh, Watson, John Lucas the third, Nate I remember. Robinson. Now Marcus Teague is one the one failed experiment. Yeah, Marcus Teague was, but his brother's not. Yeah, uh, Kirk <laughs> Heinrich was uh, that. That wasn't really that wasn't like a guy that needed his career revived. That's just a guy Thibodeau likes. Like Aaron Brooks, Jimmer Fredette from last year. Yeah, the thing about Heinrich, DJ Augustine. Yes, D- DJ Augustine last year. Um. The the thing about Heinrich, he's pretty much done. I mean, he can't do anything. Why really is he anymore. even playing? I don't even notice his defense being like well, very noticeable. Is he currently hurt or is he back? I, I think he's. I think he was playing. I think he played in their yeah, game against he, Cleveland. I, I know he was hurt a couple games before All Star break, so I yeah, don't know. Because Jimmy Butler thought that it was okay to sit out an important game against Cleveland so that he could play in the All Star game. Yeah, and he also missed the skills challenge, which I was kind of upset about because I think he would have ran over everybody in that skills challenge that that that, that I was watching. You no, know, back when, after uh, let's see, the skills challenge was on Saturday. Okay, so when yeah. after NIU won their uh, game. Seven to two over SIUE, and or ISUE or something like that. They won seven to two, <laughs> and we got back to the hotel and we watched the end of the skills challenge. And it was it was Beverly against someone? Yeah, it, it was Knight, uh, Br- Beverly and Brandon Patrick Beverly and Brandon Knight. Yes, and we weren't watching this because we wanted to. There was literally nothing else on. Right. Um, and 
I forget who it was, had a huge lead and then missed like four threes to win the get the thing, and then the last guy came on, made his first one, and it was over. Yeah, I, I was watching a little bit of that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't think people really took that seriously. The thing that was really cool was, of course, Zach Lafon, Zach Levine. 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 Yeah, uh, he was his, good. His, um, yeah, his uh, dunks were probably the best since either Jason Richardson or Vince Carter. So I mean, or he, Nate Robinson. Yeah, he he, he, was, he did really good. And uh, the three point shootout, Steph Curry had what uh, ten or thirteen makes in a row in that final round. I mean, mm, yeah, that, he, that was amazing. That was a, that three point contest was fun because you actually had a bunch of guys that were shooting threes, and the guys that shouldn't have been in the contest, like James Harden, did not make it past the I, first round. I knew round. he wouldn't do good. I, I I knew Harden would be bad. I mean, he only shoots like 30. I was very disappointed with Corver because yeah. I picked Corver, and man, he didn't do very well. And then, of course, in the All Star game, he went like seven for twelve from three. But of course, in the uh, three point shootout, he didn't do anything. He needed a hand in his face. Yeah, he plays well guarded. He's uh, he's an exception to a lot of players like that. Um, it's, I mean, the All Star game was sort of exciting. That All Star set a nice up, but the All Star game itself was. Not exciting as it's usually not. So yeah, and I think we watched some of the three-point competition. Then we went down to the bar, and it, it was a fun weekend. They NIU came in second place in the Maka playoff tournament. They lost three to two in the final game. Wow! And then of course uh, on Sunday afternoon, I went to the Hawks game where they won in the shootout. So I was pretty yeah, lucky. I was able to keep up with some of it because well, the game started at eleven thirty and. Right. The team bus left for the ice rink from the hotel at 11.30, so it was just like, ah. Oh. Except yeah, when we got to the ice timing. rink, they had the game on in the lobby, so after we set up all the equipment, we went down and watched it, and then we were able to watch it in between periods. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, Dromosin had uh, a goal the beginning of the second period. The only goal. Uh, Saad made a great play. We didn't see the actual goal live. We went down, and they were showing the replay of, Tabes winning the face off and then Saad boxing someone out yeah. to get the pass to Yeah, Jalmerson. it was a wide open shot for for Jalmerson. and um, then Detroit scored um, or not Detroit. What am I Pittsburgh. talking about? Pittsburgh. Detroit's who they lost to yesterday. Uh, the Penguins uh, had a goal. I think in the very beginning of the third period, they had a goal to tie it up, and then overtime was really exciting. Uh, the Hawks. I think in the third period there was a shot that hit the post. Uh, and then, of course, in the shootout, the Hawks went three for three and one. Um, and then Fleur, Mark Andre Fleury slammed his stick yeah, on the goal. Yeah, post. he slammed his stick, and uh, when it and uh, Sidney Crosby, he um, had a goal that shouldn't have went in. But Man, was that a it was cheapy. deflected off of Crawford, and then it bounced behind him into the net. So that kind of sucked. But I was just glad that I saw a win. I'm I'm now six and zero in in Hawks games that I've been to. So I've, I've never seen them lose. They're the only team I haven't seen lose live. So. <laughs> Yeah, we've seen the Cubs lose. I, of I know I've seen this. I've seen the Cubs, Sox, Bears, and and uh, and Bulls lose live plenty oh, of times. So you know, going into last season, not the not this last season, they went five and eleven. Mark Tressman's first before Mark Tressman was head coach, I was eight and zero at Bears games. Oh, nice. And yes, yeah, I, Mark I, I was uh, two and two. And in the Mark Tressman era, I've seen them lose four times. <laughs> Yeah, and then I saw that I saw them lose to Miami, which you were at that game too, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was very disappointing. But now, hopefully, we'll have something good coming up for right. Here. Yeah, I don't think the overtime got as intense at the end as that Phoenix game, though. No, with the goal called back, and then right or then the refs calling it no goal after it cro- looked like it crossed the line, and then Sod hitting the goal post with. Mike Smith on the ground mm-hmm. or on the ice. Right, right. Yeah, that. Uh, yeah, you were definitely at a very, very in- intense game. Although mine was pretty cool. No, yours was pretty cool too. Uh, it was definitely a sellout. Uh, well, that was. Uh, yep, last night was sellout number three hundred six in a row for the Hawks. Yeah, I mean that's pretty Im- impressive, obviously. And there was a good amount of uh, Penguins fans. Penguins fans there. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people like coming to the United Center and. Uh, Yesterday's overtime was really good too. I, I saw it. I, I was uh, especially that last minute. It seemed like Keith kept having all these wide open lanes. He kept shooting, and Jimmy Howard would stop it. Yeah, he did a nice job for Detroit there. He um, he did. They got lucky he though. Did, he definitely did a good job on that Versteeg after Detroit scored to take the lead with two minutes left. Versteeg just blasted that one. 
Howard made the save and then Cronwall knocked it in right. for Detroit. So, yeah, that, I mean, there you go. It was pretty uh, intense for sure. Yeah, it was. It was too bad they lost in that uh, shootout. And Jimmy Howard was 0 for 7 in shootouts this season going into that game. So I was like, oh, maybe they got this. And then Tabe scores after Crawford stops Dotsuk. Mm-hmm. And then Kane hit the goal post, and then Sharp just, I don't even know what he, it looked like he just went up and shot it. It was like a bad yeah. attempt. Sharp, I, I, I was looking at his stats while I was at the game Sunday afternoon. He has not really had that good of a year this year. Yeah, he scored goal number nine in December, and I th- he missed a lot. Of, then he I saw something, his uh, shooting percentage is the worst that it's been for for like five or six years. So Yeah, I mean, at least he's shooting the puck. I mean, it's just not going. It was just kind of like Hosa at the beginning of the year. Ten goals up until last week, and then he scored seven goals in a week and then won the uh, first star of the week honors. Yeah, yeah, he did. I mean, Sharp is the kind of guy, once he gets going, he gets going. And remember this... 2013 when they won the Stanley Cup he only he didn't have like that great of a regular season and then he heated up in the playoffs mm-hmm. so hopefully that'll happen again yeah, he's been struggling to score some goals he's doing pretty well in the points department he's still racking up some assists yes he is and uh yeah coming up next we're going to talk about spring training as uh the Cubs reported today the Sox report tomorrow and uh we're all getting ready for baseball season, which will be the most exciting season, reportedly, since uh, 2008. So hopefully <laughs> it will be for both baseball teams. But I don't know if I want a cross-town World Series. That, that would be a little too much intense. And if the Sox ever won that against the Cubs, uh, that, that would be just heartbreaking <laughs> for it most be. of the fans <laughs> in Chicago. So, all right, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be back. Sports Renegades, SportsTownChicago.com. The Sports Renegades podcast on SportsTownChicago.com.